Well, DeAndre Hopkins has finally found a new home and it's sort of an unexpected one only because he practically guaranteed himself zero Super Bowl rings in his entire NFL career by signing with this team. So let's talk about it and then look at what the Chiefs could do with their freed up cap space after a Chris Jones extension now that D-Hop isn't an option. That is, if a deal with Chris Jones even gets done at all. But first, how about those Chiefs? All right, as many of you already know by now, one of the greatest available remaining free agents has found a new home. And some of you were asking yesterday where my breaking news video was. Well, I was too busy smoking my entire family in Mario Kart on the Nintendo Switch for one and two. This isn't breaking news for the Chiefs. I mean, Saturday, I gave this wide receiver signing with Kansas City a 30% chance, which was probably being a bit generous. And that's because I believed that this receiver simply wanted too much money and would be unwilling to take enough of a discount to come and play for the Chiefs. Anyway, it was an announced yesterday that wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins is expected to sign a two-year deal with an absolute unit of a team, a definite Super Bowl contender, a team that makes complete sense for a 31-year-old receiver who has yet to win a ring. I mean, never mind the fact that this team finished last season 7-10, and 10, their QB situation is currently a mess, and they probably will still finish around 500, or as close to 500 as you can be considering the season now has 17 games, and that team was the Tennessee Titans. I mean, good God almighty, the AFC better watch out for this frightening team. I ain't scared of you, mother. All right, trolling aside, the Titans do have a great coach in Mike Rabel and always seem to give the Chiefs quite a tough fight, so I do have some respect for them, certainly. And uh, I also, perhaps, may still be a little bit bitter about the Mariota playoff game where he threw himself a touchdown pass and helped the Titans rally from a 21-3 deficit to win that stupid game. I was there, in that end zone, when that play happened, and it still haunts me to this day. Anyway, I really just found the whole ordeal to be pretty humorous because of all the talk about Hopkins wanting to play for a Super Super Bowl contender, and he's going to the Titans where veteran receivers' careers go to die. What do you mean he's dead? He went south yesterday. He ain't dead. They, they killed him. I, I thought you knew that. And to be clear, I am not upset he didn't sign with the Chiefs. Again, I did not think that was likely. I'm more just surprised he ended up in Tennessee after all the talk about him potentially wanting to play for Super Bowl contenders. And as far as D-Hop's contract goes, he is expected to sign a two-year $26 million contract with a base value of $12 million for year one and a chance to get up to $15 million. And the total contract could be worth up to $32 million with incentives. And uh, yeah, there was no way in hell the Chiefs were going to be paying D-Hop that kind of money. And now that D-Hop is gone, the question still remains, what moves, if any, will the Chiefs make after a Chris Jones extension happens? And I guess before exploring those possibilities, it's worth bringing up the fact that some people think D-Hop went ahead and signed with the Titans because the Chiefs and Chris Jones are not in a great spot as far as contract negotiations are concerned with his extension. I mean, no Chris Jones extension equals no freed up money. And if D-Hop was made to believe there was a chance the Chiefs may not have any money, why would he wait around? Now, to be clear, I'm more inclined to believe that the Chiefs and D-Hop simply were pretty far off numbers-wise in whatever talks slash negotiations they had after D-Hop was released, and Hopkins simply knew he would never sign with KC even if Chris Jones got his extension because DeAndre wanted more money then the Chiefs would have been willing to pay. And therefore, I think it was mutual that things wouldn't work out here for D-Hop in Kansas City. And to Tennessee, he went. Now, why might the Chiefs and Chris Jones negotiations not be going well as far as an extension is concerned? Um, I could see, I guess, Chris Jones and his camp wanting closer to Aaron Donald average money, while the Chiefs in their camp possibly wanting to be closer to Quinnen Williams' money. And for context, the second highest paid defensive tackle is Quinnen Williams since he signed his new deal with the Jets and has him averaging $24 million per year. And the highest paid defensive tackle, Aaron Donald, is averaging around $31.6 million per year. So 24 to 31.6. And if Chris Jones and company want closer to Aaron Donald, 31.6, maybe around 30. But the Chiefs want to be closer to Quinn and Williams, maybe around 25. Maybe then I could see negotiations are indeed struggling, but I am of the opinion that Chris Jones and the Chiefs will indeed reach a number somewhere around 26 to 28 million per year, but give him more guaranteed money and then boom, deal gets done and Chris Jones stays a chief for life like he wants to anyway. And if that for some reason doesn't happen, talking about a deal getting reached soon, I would think the Chiefs end up franchise tagging Chris Jones next season. But in my opinion right now, I think at least a deal gets done soon and uh, the odds of that happening are pretty low. If it happens, 
that's a whole nother video. And now that we've talked through the negotiations, when this deal more than likely does get done, what does that mean for the Chiefs as far as the extra money is concerned and moves they could make? That's the question I wanna answer after I talk about the wide receiver room. Now that it's clear, DeAndre Hopkins will not be getting added. I honestly think the Chiefs believe in their wide receiver room and no more serious moves will be made there, especially considering there aren't any real free agents still available that's gonna bring a lot of extra value to the room. They have Kadarius Tony, who if healthy, I know that's the caveat, if healthy, will get around 1,200 yards, could get around 1,200 yards from scrimmage this season. And hey, speaking of Tony, shout out to the Joka merch we have on the online store as well as my delicious HBTC coffee. Links to both of those in the description. The coffee especially, man, it's gonna give you a nice victorious buzz, so make sure to check it out. Anyway, next up is MBS, who was only a few misconnects with Mahomes from having over a thousand yards last season himself. Then Sky is looking to take quite the leap in year two, and Mahomes and Rasheed Rice are reportedly building great rapport so far. So those four are definite locks, barring injury, in my opinion. Then you have the more than likely to be locks in Richie James, the only other receiver who's had more than 500 yards in a season other than MVS, and Justin Watson, who just signed a two-year deal. Then, of course, there's guys like Justin Ross and John Ross fighting for that wide receiver six spot. Unless the Chiefs go with seven, then you will probably see one of them on there for sure. But time will tell with those guys, and I ultimately think the Chiefs like where they're at with their wide receiver room, especially considering they still have Travis Kelsey, who will most likely put up over a 1,000 yards once again this season. Anyway, while this wide receiver room isn't proven, if anyone can figure it out and make the juice or the squeeze big pause, it's going to be Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid. There's also the fact that last year Mahomes had 31 passing TDs to running backs and tight ends, which is the most in the Super Bowl era via ESPN. And then if things aren't going well due to injuries or they need to add more talent, they could make another trade before the trade deadline midseason, just like they did last year for Kadarius Tony. Though I know that does come with its own set of complications like the inability to fully learn the playbook for basically the rest of the season and therefore a more limited role, but it's still a possibility that can be explored if needed. Now, while they may not add to the wide receiver room in the near future, I could see them bringing in a veteran edge rusher like Carlos Dunlap, I like that, Yannick Ngakwe, Robert Quinn, Melvin Ingram, or even Justin Houston. Okay, probably not Justin Houston, but the Chiefs fan in me would love it for nostalgic purposes, or maybe they even bring in a defensive tackle like Shelby Harris and Dominica Sue, or pick your poison because I'm less familiar with available defensive tackles at the moment. Don't get me wrong though, I am happy with the D-line for the most part, but just thinking of some other position groups that could see some veteran additions. Then there's also the possibility that the Chiefs could front load a bit of Chris Jones's extension money this year, to make the future cap hits more bearable. And I honestly don't know how likely that is. I'm also not a contract expert, but I guess you can't fully rule that out. And you also can't rule them out extending somebody like Legereus Sneed, who is a key part of the defense and is on a contract year, though the Chiefs rarely extend defensive backs that they draft, as well as Willie Gay, who's on a contract year also. Or there are other staple players like Creed Humphrey and Nick Bolton that will need attention in the nearest future also. So maybe instead of adding more from the outside, though I think they will add a veteran somewhere, they could also opt to keep a key player or two a chief for years to come, extending one of those guys. And if all that wasn't enough, here's another one for you. Uh, there's still the report out there from Mike Floride Florio that Mahomes will get extended and once again become the highest paid player in the NFL before the season starts. And the more I think about it, even though I think Floride is an absolute dillweed at times with his takes, don't get me wrong, but if this report turns out to be true, the only way that is probably even possible is if the Chiefs make Mahomes priority number one or one of the main priorities immediately following a Chris Jones extension. Mahomes is currently the seventh highest paid QB if you average the amount per year, but once Burrow and Herbert get their deal, deals done. Don't ask what that was. But once they get their deals done, Mahomes will drop to ninth and sooner than later will be out of the top 10, uh, which would kind of be crazy considering the fact that Mahomes is bar none the best player in the league. I mean, he just won league MVP, Super Bowl MVP, and SB for best NFL player and best male athlete and was even, to nobody's surprise, recently voted by execs, coaches, scouts, and players as the best QB in the league per ESPN. Therefore, if Mahomes wants the pay bump, the Chiefs will do it, dude. I mean, he is worth it all and more without a shadow of a doubt. The question is though, does Mahomes really care at the moment about making more on the field considering what he makes off the field in endorsements due to that on the field success? I mean, he is in so many commercials recently doing stuff with Walmart, he's in the QB documentary, all this off the field appearances, interviews, 
All that pays money. He is eating good, trust me. Anyway, that's where I wanna pass the question off to you guys. What do you personally think the Chiefs may end up doing once a Chris Jones extension gets done? Um, I think they could definitely extend someone, talking about Sneed or Mahomes, as well as bring in a veteran player at a needed position group, but do you agree? Or maybe you're of the opinion that a Chris Jones extension isn't getting done at all. Either way, you gotta let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and until next time, let's go. Let's freaking go. How about those Chiefs?